Right, hello everyone and welcome to the As Yet Unnamed CrossFit Taylor Training Podcast. I'm going to be the host, certainly for a day, probably not for much longer. And then on my right, I've got Mick Williamson and John Lee Lyman. So, firstly, Mick, can you tell me a bit about yourself? Yeah, um, I'm Mick, uh, one of the coaches at CrossFit Taylor Training um, and the owner as well, along with John been running the affiliate for eight years now so I feel like we've changed and adapted um, as we've got more experience and went through it but um, loving CrossFit also like running, swimming, other sort of activities outside the box as well. Excellent and importantly I've got five questions for you Mick. All right. All right. I need your first answer. There we go. You ready? Bench or squat? Bench. Froning or Fraser? Froning. Big spoon or little spoon? <laughs> Big spoon. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Nanos or Metcons? Uh, nanos. Excellent. And John Lee, can you introduce yourself to the team as well, please? Hi, I'm John Lee. Uh, little cool. spoon. <laughs> Hi, the little spoon. <laughs> cool there uh, with Mick. Uh, I'm one of the coaches here at CrossFit Team and Training. Like Mick said, it's, it's coming up our eighth year anniversary of being an affiliate. Um, background is in football, starting football, going to fitness. I've uh, been doing it for about 20, 20 plus years. I know you were an affiliate. <laughs> um, that's it. Lovely. That's question two. Five questions for you, John Lee. All right. Burpees or thrusters? Oh, uh, burpees. Rektovich or Mayhem? Mayhem. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars, easily. Crocs or sliders? Sliders, Crocs are no good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> My boys just bought some. Shocking. Shirt on or shirt off? Shirt on. Shirt on. There we go. Lovely. So, first question. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's start at the beginning. What is CrossFit? And why should I do it? Um, CrossFit is something that ticks all the boxes. Uh, we've been in the fitness industry a long time, and it seems to be something where you can get all types of people, all types of fitness abilities, all together doing the, the same workout, uh, experiencing all together as a community. It's constantly varied, so it stops you getting bored. Every session's different, every theme's different. I, um, it's functional movement, it seems to be a buzzword at the moment in the, the fitness industry. So it doesn't just get you strong for the gym, it gets you strong for real life outside of the gym. Um, and it's performing at high intensity. Again, this is where affiliates and coaches come in by finding people's levels to find the intensity. So it's, it ticks a few boxes, so you can have athletes, you can have total beginners, you can have anyone with a medical condition. It, it seems to bring everybody together and can be scale to suit. Lovely. What about yourself, mate? You can yeah, yeah I, I, I like CrossFit because it's getting it's getting that banter between everyone. So when you go to the gym and if you go to a global gym or you go and you do your, your exercises and stuff like that, it'll sharp get boring where when it's led by somebody, you'll, you'll pick someone up from the coaches. Like we'll learn from the other coaches around us um, and how to make it fun and enjoyable and then it's a bit of like a sort of dressing room banter where John mentioned he was in football and stuff like that. You'll have the banter, but then you'll have the, the banter within the class with others as well. And that's what the, the sort of community is as well. So that's what I find sort of is great, but also when you're getting together, if you see someone else doing an extra round or going that extra rep, you'll push for that extra rep as well. And you'll probably be pulling someone else along as well with you to, to keep going. So say if it was a, a workout where you had to do five rounds and at three rounds you're done in the next two rounds you'll still do because other people are there doing it with you where if you're in your own gym at home or in a global gym you're probably just sacking off after three so that's what i find is that next level for everyone 100 percent. and I, I think i'll add something in here so i'm just a member of tt and um, i like to help the guys out but mainly i'm just a member and for me 
I was one of those people who always used to hate CrossFit and used to naysay CrossFit and think it was stupid. And then in 2019, I started and I, I understood what it was about. And to me, going to a normal gym, exactly like Mick said, you go in, you do your own thing. And I enjoyed that, I always enjoyed training. But I'm similar to John Lee, come from a sports background and a team background and training together. And when I came to CrossFit, what clicked for me was that it, it was being part of a team and it was like going to gym club, as it were, the same that you go to a boxing club or judo club or tennis club or whatever it might be, and being with like-minded people who surround you. Yeah. And there's that like infectious energy, as well as the instruction, the tuition that you don't get in a normal gym. There's that phrase, practice makes, per um, practice makes perfect, but the reality is practice just makes permanent. If you're not being corrected and you're not being taught and you're not being educated, you're not going to improve because you never know if you're doing it wrong. Whereas having the likes of Mick or John Lee or Amph or Nick and um, the other two coaches being there to watch over you, that's the big difference and that's what really got me hooked. Um, and like I say, I've been a member of TT for about 18 months now and um, like, I still want to come back every day and beat myself and see what my previous scores are. Um, so that leads me to my next question. What's TT? I think it's the community really. I think I, a lot of CrossFit boxers will, will be seeing the same sort of thing as well, but it's a, it's a great bunch of people that have, have met through coming to the gym. Um, and yeah, they might have all different sort of ability even fitness levels, um, but they'll all be doing the workout together and then looking in together. Like it's great. My mum and dad are coming now. Um, John Lee's mum and dad are, have always been here really, but my mum and dad were the, the same and didn't really want to do it. And um, they're in the seventies and doing CrossFit version of it of our our overs category, um, our life category, and that's just ticking a box for everyone. So it's trying to get the whole community in, involved in doing something, and it doesn't have to be as hard as or as, as sort of aggressive as what you might see on YouTube, and you're seeing more of the people who are professionals at it. Um, this is more like the grassroots. For, for CrossFit really. 100% and I think one of the things about TT that you've alluded to there is the spectrum of people that are now involved in, in CrossFit as well as having a live programme that caters for the over 55s you've also got the Movement Academy. Can you tell us a little bit about that as well John Lee? Yeah it's, uh, it's introducing kids from the age of like 8 up to, to the 15 so it's two different classes <clears throat> trying to get them to learn movement patterns but also have fun with it. Um, not just for sport, but for, for life, because uh, when they leave school, we, we all need to keep fit, and there's no better way than doing CrossFit, so if we can learn them from a young age, I'd be amazed where they can get to by the time they get our age of 21, you know? <laughs> You've had your third 21 birthday, yeah. haven't you? <laughs> <I'm> getting there. <laughs> yeah, um, so if I'm sitting out there watching this, and I've maybe thought about CrossFit, like you say, I've maybe seen the likes of Matt Fraser or Mal O'Brien on YouTube, and I'm thinking, nah, there's no way I could ever do that. But I'm intrigued by it. Why would I start CrossFit? But this is, uh, what are your goals? The first thing, that's one of the first questions when people are coming in, it's like, why do you want to do this? What's your, what's your goal? What's your reasoning? Um, so we've had various different goals from members getting ticked off and things like that over the, the past few months. So. This is where tailored training's name came from a little bit, where we can tailor it to suit your goals. So like we're looking at people now who's getting ready for the Great North Run. Yeah. So they're going to be putting in two to three runs a week. Um, and then it's trying to just incorporate that in the, in the, in the program that they're doing here. Uh, this is more the strength program to make them a better runner as well. Um, so the, the reason is why, why do you want to do it? Because everyone's coming in for different reasons. So someone might be coming in to say, oh, I want to get better at pull-ups um, and someone else might be saying I want to be getting I want to lose a bit of weight I want to get better at uh, cardio um, I want to get better at a squat so then we can sort of tailor it as like you can look at this a little bit more or tweak the whiteboard a little bit as, you, as you're coming in so, so with that being said if I'm looking at it and I'm thinking no, I like the sound of that how do I go about starting John Lee? Ed, the, the first thing we, we always do, anyone who's new to CrossFit, we always we start with something known as an on-ramp, which is like an introduction into what it actually is. So that's three sessions, 
we do it one to one uh, or maybe as a small group depending if you come with a friend uh, and we go through basically what CrossFit is uh, the philosophy of our programming um, why the benefits it can give you and um, we go through the, the whiteboard which we'll, we'll talk about later and basically we go through the fundamental movements to make sure that people know what they're doing they're not just thrown in the deep end and go out today this is what we're doing and everyone's guessing it so what we try to get them to do is in them three sessions they learn the movements they know what they're expected so when they come to class the coach can coach everyone and not just that one person like it's, it's going to be with everybody excellent and so the purpose of us doing this podcast um is to reach out to people who haven't done crossfit before that maybe are thinking about it or but also to communicate what it's about not just at tt but maybe if you're training on your own give you some ideas that maybe could help you in your training life but also what we want to do is talk to the members about different things that are going on in the gym different things that they can do so hopefully this should reach everyone there might be something for everyone within this um but like i say with this being the start and the first time that we've done this i thought it was important to start at the beginning and we've already heard it mentioned a few times the whiteboard if you've watched any video morning chalk up or anything like that on or to do with crossfit on youtube it's come up when you've been scrolling at three o'clock in the morning you'll have heard this phrase so mate what is it it's a whiteboard mate <laughs> it's a whiteboard uh, we, it's it's our programming we, we spend a lot of time on the programming just to to try and suit people that's coming in the box um so it's to, to try and work on people's weaknesses and work on people's strengths but it depends everyone's got different ones so we're trying to keep it nice and rounded but it's trying to get you stronger fitter healthier for your sport or just in general your fitness if you haven't got any sort of specific goals um there's various different scaling variations on it as well um and then the coach will go through that but throughout the week if you're turning up we feel like it's ticking all the boxes um, and yes there might want to be a few like accessory things in there as well on top of it but me and John just follow the follow the whiteboard um, and we'll do a few accessory exercises on that but that's just to help us with our with our goals yeah the air just sorry just to add this for the remember take like a strength and condition program so we've, we, we work on strength skills and obviously condition at the end which would be your ward so the whiteboard, literally whoever's on the whiteboard, no one will do more than what's on the whiteboard. Um, but everyone can do something underneath it. So it's, it can be scaled for all abilities. So when we get people around it in class and we go through what the skill is or the strength and then what the what is, it can be modified for anybody. So you could have a total beginner coming in or someone who's been doing it for eight, nine years. Yes, they're gonna, be doing something slightly different but the stimulus is going to be similar um, and at the end the aim is to get everyone with that fist pump at the end to, as a well done type of thing yeah getting your own personal score and i think as a as a member that's something that like i find really helpful um the there's a term that you may have come across it's called rx which is your regulation exercise which is the the standard of the gym but then you maybe have what, what we call the RX Plus, which is, okay, maybe like John Lee says, you're a bit more advanced. So you might look at a board and go, and it might say, right, we're gonna do muscle ups today. And you go, there's no way I can do a muscle up. But the scaled version might be a jumping muscle up, or it might be doing uh, on, a, on a low bar and just working on that movement. There's always something depending on what it is, or if you're carrying an injury. And you're not limited to just what it says on that board. And that's where the tailored training comes in. So I'll give a, life, a real life example just from this morning's session. The session involved doing uh, pull-ups and doing squats. The pull-ups, uh, sorry, the RX version was a heavier weight and doing chest to bar pull-ups. Now, for me personally, the pull-ups aren't a problem. However, the heavy weight on the squat is. So I did the RX option on the squat, but then the chest to bar pull-ups yeah. on the pull-ups. So, I'm hitting what I need as an individual, and that was through support of Mick, um, who was coaching the session this morning. And there's always that option there. There's one phrase that I've heard mentioned like a load of times, and it's scaling isn't failing, that that board's there to guide you, and that's all. 
it's up to you to find and learn and understand your your effort and i think that's something that's really important um, in crossfit is that it's about learning about yourself and your ability yeah. and what you need to work on that's what we we find is like if if see you went to 60 you wouldn't have got that same intensity because you would have had the bar on the floor more than actually holding it so it's trying to find that right mix where it's uncomfortable a little bit in times, but you can still move with it and it's just challenging your breathing otherwise you're just looking at a, a bar on the floor rather than um, doing any movement so it's getting that balance and because you've been coming in for the 18 months we, we know you like what you're going to be good at and bad at um, and that's just through seeing you and understanding what your strengths and weaknesses are yeah and I think Again, okay, this is more maybe aimed at people who are already started in CrossFit and are already come into the gym. Um, but Mick's already talked about it, and John Lee's mentioned it. That a big part of it is goals, goal setting, and tracking. So, what I was thinking about, maybe you could say a little bit about the purpose of Box Mate in terms of, of your goals and your tracking along there. Yeah, it's a, a, so in TT we, we have a, an app called uh, Box Mate, which one if you can class with it. To you can also see the, the news of everything that's happening in the box as well and, and the programming. But we try and encourage people when they're doing the workout, whatever their version of the workout is, is to, to pop it down on box me, it'll record it, and then in the future, if that one comes up again, um, you can actually go against yourself to see if you beat the other score, if you've improved the reps you've done, or the time, or the weight, or whatever it may be. And it's a way of tracking if you are actually getting better because ironically the crossfit it actually feels harder the longer you've been doing it so you start questioning am i getting any fitter but this is why it's important to track so you can look back and nine times out of ten you, you will beat uh, your first score which tells us that you are getting fitter in loads of different ways um it's just and it's a good way of the community also there's it's got a little thing on it where you can high five each other fist pump each other which just shows you've got like people around you who are also want to improve and the more people you surround yourself like that there's more chance of you sticking at it um but box made that these are the little tools that will be released in the future which we're, we're looking into for a tt which is prefer you to keep, keep yourself comfortable by recording and um in terms of like we alluded to earlier the goals aren't necessarily just CrossFit. Yes, we have people who compete at different competitions all over all over the region, um, and the Open and all those other things. But recently, in, in just this last month, we've had a, a few members take on some really impressive challenges where CrossFit has been a supplement to, to their achievement. Um, we had two members that I'll let Mick talk about because he was actually there enjoying their pain um, and their triumph. Um, but to give you an idea of how CrossFit can support what it is you do on the outside. Yeah, so it was um, John Johnson and Dave Beckinsale uh, done the wall, um, and this is Adrian's wall, so it starts in Carlisle, um, and then they've got, I think it was 26 hours to do the, the 70 miles, um, and finishing on the, the quay side at Newcastle, and now me and Victoria met them in um, like Wyland, um, just to sort of, that was around about 55 mile, and they were, they were, they were in good spirits and, and doing well, but I couldn't, I was saying to Victoria, I didn't think we could have actually ran from where they were back to the quayside, so it was just, uh, it, was, it was inspiring, and um, we've seen them throughout the, sort of the training as well, um, trying to just look after the bodies and work around, so we had John Johnson, who was just not doing any skipping, because he was obviously doing a lot of miles, a lot of miles on his cast and things like that. So he wasn't doing any skipping and he came in last week and he was just struggling to skip again yeah. because he'd lost that skill a little bit. But it was all just tweaking it to just so he could get the, the 70 miles done. So if he was carrying on skipping, he would have lost these sort of miles or he could have got injured and things like that. So it was little things that were helping along the way that from the time we sort of not even think about it's just a gimme but he was like that was massive because i would have just kept doing it and, and, uh, but it was great to see them finish the, um, on the saturday night at about 11 o'clock running through with everyone else on the quayside it was um 
on a different uh, night that night. Oh, definitely <laughs> a different type of experience. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, really inspiring. It's, but it's it's great. It's like spurred people on to to do a five k, do a ten k in the gym. So it's great for that as well. Yeah, I mean we try to encourage people to do. Uh, if people are already doing a sport, this is a strength conditioning program yeah. to improve that sport. But at TT, we, we try to get people to get involved in something. So that could be a charity run. It could be another like little sport. Like we recently did a district health thing where people have never done competitions before. They came along, and it wasn't about winning it. It was just about taking part and actually just expressing yourself how far you've come when you first started. If you look back at day one when you first started. But if, if we go on the side of health, we've got people in our oldest classes who have, have been very, very poorly. And CrossFit's been a way of getting them either to get surgery or to recover them from surgery. So like the, the, the benefit is really, really broad. It can be sport, it can be health. It's, it's a bit of everything. And obviously the community, we're all, we're all together to try and like just keep pushing up forward, which will help with your goal. I hundred percent. I think like John Lee's just mentioned there, District L. Um and I, th I think from my perspective I'd like to just um, mention that as well. We had um four teams in the competition. Um each team had six members in it, so there was doing some men some quick maths there, that's 20, 24 members that went down to actually compete as well as a number of members who came down to support. Um for me personally it was my second or third um, competition obviously John Lee with his age he's been doing competitions for a very long time so so you know it was water for death's back for him apart from his calves and hamstrings that suffered quite quite heavily through there but but um but for the for, for for some people you know they're, they're veterans and um you know some of us will just hit masters so it's you know it's, it's all right but but getting all of those people there all at different stages in their journey um and or getting together as that team really to me um, epitomised what, what this place is about and um, as on the back of it we, we completed it less than a month ago and we've already got I think four teams signed up for, for next year um, so you know you don't have to be involved in these things but those opportunities are there and, and I think from, from my perspective I think the 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 growth of that competitive side of the gym has been been quite big over the last few months and i think people got starved a lot of those in social interactions during the lockdown yeah. and these activities are becoming more and more important people realize that being part of these communities is really good not just for your your physical health but also for your mental health yeah. um, and and to me that's been massive in, in my personal journey um, and i think it's big for for, for everyone really and if, if you if you're looking for something to do that's got that physical element and also that social element i honestly couldn't recommend crossfit enough that's whether you're in the washington tight and wear area and thinking well oh, crossfit tt is the one for me or whether you're in um portsmouth and looking at your local box i think that the crossfit really does tick a lot of boxes on that front in fact, being honest, not even just nationally, I recently went on holiday to Spain um, and every morning went to the local CrossFit box there and, and it is really an international language um, and, and me and my girlfriend Amy were both able to go and be a part of that, which is something that I would never have imagined myself doing two years ago, but that worldwide community, you know, is huge. Um, and so I think to wrap up today, the idea behind this, like I say, is to talk to people who've never done CrossFit, but also our members. And, and what we're going to look to do is similar, similar length episodes, short episodes, and talk about different aspects to training, different things to think about, whether it might be your own personal goal setting, your use of the open gym to supplement the training, specific movements, specific challenges, and also, as for me, an opportunity to celebrate those achievements of, of the members of TT. Um, and explore what it is we're doing. Like John Lee said about the programming, I don't think people understand just how much effort and time goes into making it work to make it so that you progress, you recover and all those things and, and to kind of really explore that um, and allow you that insight into what we're about. Um, that's from my part. Anything else that you two would like to add before we close? But this is all new to us, so it's, we just feel it's a way of um, sharing anything that's happening in the box, educate everyone, and um, 
and there might be a few guest appearances of the yeah. old member in if, if, if he's a game for it. Uh, but this is just something new for us. And give it a go, see what happens. There have been a few arms, so if you can count how many. <laughs> you know, so. Good drinking game, Matt. Like yeah. that. Every arm, you've got to have a shot. But make sure it's a shot of Noco, which we do down at the gym. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I think um, anything, any topics that you want to, to know about or know more about, um, just let us know because then it'll give us a bit more direction on what, what you guys want as members uh, or what people want wide and field. Just let us know and then we're going to have a little chat about it. Or in John Lewis' case, a lot of chat about it. But, but yeah, any, if that would be a great start, I think. If, if there's any, if you've got any burning questions or something that you'd like to know a little bit more about, drop us a message, drop us a comment, and that'll give us a good direction of where to go. But obviously it's our first time doing it, so any technical issues, anything like that, we'll look to get them ironed out as we go forward. Um, don't be too harsh on us, but I hope you've enjoyed listening to us today. Um, so thank you for your time. Cool. Cheers, yeah, thank you very much. No worries. All the, all the best, and um, we'll see you soon on the next one. All right, cheers. Three, two, one, go.